Hi there, the Math Dog here. In this video, I'm going to go through the essential triangle congruency postulates and theorems. This would be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 angle side, and hypotenuse legs. So you use these properties to show that two pairs of triangles or two triangles are congruent to each other. That is, congruent means same shape and size. So let's get started. First of all, let's look at postulates versus theorems. A mathematical postulate is an assumption. It's also called an assumption. So we accept an assumption or postulate as true without proof. One restriction, however, is that the assumption must fit other assumptions made and not create contradictions in the mathematical system. So I think a good example of a contradiction would be, let's assume that we allow division by zero in our mathematical system. So we would all agree that three times zero is zero because we have the zero property there. So whenever you multiply something by zero, you get zero. But if I allow division by zero, remember anything divided by itself is one. So if I, have, if I divide both sides of this equation by zero, zero by zero has to be one. And now I get three equals one, which is no way. That's a contradiction, so thus we cannot allow division by zero, so we cannot make that assumption in, this ma in our mathematical system because it causes problems. All right, so then postulates versus theorems continued. A theorem is a conclusion that can be reached by using logical reasoning that combines postulates, definitions, and previously proven theorems. So a definition simply describes something. It's just a description of what it is. A postulate says something about something, and a theorem says something, but it uses previous theorems, postulates, and definitions. So in this video, we're going to be doing both assumptions or postulates and theorems. So let's continue. So our first postulate or assumption in geometry here is going to be the side, 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 which we say SSS triangle congruency postulate. So what we do is I have two, I have a triangle here, and I have side one, side two, side three, and then y, one prime, side length of one prime is gonna be the same as one, two prime is the same as two, three prime is the same as three. Well, there's only one way that I can put these like sticks together to get a triangle. And since there's only one way, these triangles must be the same shape and size, therefore they have to be congruent. So Side, side, side says if two triangles have three pairs of congruent sides, there's only one unique triangle that can be constructed. Hence, the two triangles are congruent. So we assume this true. I mean, intuitively it makes sense, but we assume this true in our geometrical system. In this case, it's Euclidean geometry. So then we have the side, side, side. S I'm sorry, side, angle, side, which we say SAS, triangle congruency postulate. So... <coughs> Here we have a triangle with angle one, um, side one, this angle in red, and we have side two. One prime is a side that's congruent, same shape and size as one. Two prime is the same shape and size, shape and size as two, and then this angle here is the same measure or same is congruent to these two angles in red are congruent. So notice I can put if I put these angles together like this and these sides, the angle and these sides together, there's only one way I can form a triangle and I will show that now. So if I take this side here and I clone it, it should perfectly fit the other triangle and it does. So this is like this, I call it myself, I call it the scissors postulate because it's like this. You have a pair of scissors here so these are sides and there's the angle. Well, there's only one way you can connect the ends of the scissors, which form a unique triangle. So if two triangles have two congruent sides and the angle formed by the congruent sides, um, which is this is the angle, it's, between, it's in, in, in between the sides here. So if the angle formed by the congruent side is congruent for both triangles, then there's only one unique way the triangles can be formed and hence they are congruent. So this is side, angle, side and again here is side angle side and back to the previous problem that's side 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 if two triangles have three pairs of congruent sides they will be the triangles themselves must be congruent 
So then we have one more um, postulate, angle side angle, ASA. So this here I have two triangles, the yellow, that's the side, that's, we'll call that one, this will be one prime. This is, we'll call these, the red angles are congruent, the green angles are congruent, they're the same, they open the same amount. So notice if I put this angle here, like so, this angle here like so, there's only one way I can form a triangle. So if I extend these sides, let's make the color here, um, let's make it orange. So I'm going to make that like that. Then I'm gonna do green, extend to green. I'll, do, I'll use orange for that too. Okay, so these, the thing is these things are going to meet. So if I do the same thing over here, I'll use orange again. Extend this angle, extend this ray or side. Extend this ray or side. Let's get that to match a little better. These triangles are identical. There's only one way I can form a triangle if I have the situation angle, the included side, and the angle. So this is ASA, which is a postulate. We assume that this is true. If I have two triangles that share two congruent angles and an included side, the triangles are congruent. So this is if two triangles share two congruent angles and the sides between the two angles are congruent, then there's only one unique triangle that can be formed. Hence, the two triangles are congruent. So, so far we have side, 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 we have side angle side, and we have angle side angle. These are all assumptions, these are postulates. So now we come to our first theorem. The angle angle side AAS triangle congruency theorem. So suppose I have two triangles. They have two pairs of congruent angles, A and A prime here, the way I've drawn a C and C prime, and then there's a non-included side that is congruent. So this is gonna be, let's do it in a different color here. This is gonna be angle, angle, side. So I'm gonna show you why these two triangles, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime must be congruent. So the statement is if two triangles share two congruent angles and share a congruent side not between the angles, then the two triangles are congruent. So we're given, we're gonna do a proof now. So my proof is gonna go as follows. I'm gonna write it as a what we call a two column proof with statements and reasons. So my first statement is gonna be my givens. I'm gonna say the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle A prime. I'm gonna say the measure of angle C equals the measure angle C prime and the length of BC segment BC is equal to the length of segment B prime C prime and I write the reason for that is given okay now notice that again we have the triangle sum theorem we know that the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABC Add up to 180. So I can write two statements here. I can write the measure of angle A plus the measure angle B plus measure angle C equals 180 degrees. We know then also for the other triangle, the measure of angle A prime plus the measure angle B prime plus measure angle C prime is 180 degrees. And that's the triangle sum theorem, which says that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle equals 180 degrees. Okay. I do have a video that proves that as well. Um, so now we can say these two things are equal to each other because they're both equal to 180. That's called the transitive property. Two things congruent or equal to the same thing or equal to each other. So I can write the measure angle A plus the measure angle B plus measure angle C equals the measure angle A prime plus measure angle B prime plus measure angle 
C prime, okay? And that's the transitive property of equality. Okay, now, notice from our given, A is equal to A prime, or measure A is equal to measure A prime. So those will subtract out. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign, so those go away. Let's do red there. Those are gone, okay? C is congruent to C prime. Those are gone. Therefore, measure angle B, and it has to equal the measure of angle B prime. That's all I'm left with. So I'm gonna write the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle B prime, and this is from substitution. I'm sorry, subtraction. This is the subtraction property of equality. So notice now we can mark on our diagram B and B prime are congruent. Okay, but look what I got here now. I have A, S, A, A, S, A, which we just postulated a few moments ago. So, therefore, triangle ABC must be congruent. Must be congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime by the angle side angle triangle congruency postulate. Usually we just can write ASA and everyone knows what that means universally. So that's our proof. So now we have added, so now we have side side side, side angle side, angle side angle, and we added our theorem AAS which those are our four properties now we can use to show that two triangles are congruent. All right, let's move on. So now we have what we call hypotenuse leg, a hypotenuse leg triangle congruency theorem. So here we have two right triangles. So all right angles are gonna be equal to each other. Okay, so hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. So here's my hypotenuse, here's a hypotenuse, they are congruent. Here is a leg, here is a leg, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the Pythagorean theorem to show that BC, length of BC has to equal the length of B prime, C prime, okay? So let's start with our assumptions. We have the two legs here are congruent, A, B, let's write that in different color. So AB equals, the length of AB equals the length of A prime, B prime. The length of AC, which is the hypotenuse of triangle ABC, equals the length of the hypotenuse of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and this is given. Okay, now I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that the length of AB squared plus the length of BC squared equals the length of AC squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to abbreviate theorem THM. We also know then that A prime B prime quantity squared plus B prime C prime quantity squared equals a prime c prime squared. So now I'm going to take each one of these equations here. Let's name this 1 and 2. So let's start with 1. To solve this for bc squared, I'm going to solve it actually for bc, but bc squared is going to be ac squared. I'm going to subtract ab quantity squared from both sides, so I get this. So bc is going to be the square root of length of AC squared minus length of AB squared. Okay, and this is going to be by, I'm just going to simplify, I'm just going to say this is solving the equation. There are some other properties that are going in there, 
I'm solving for B. And yes, I'm taking some liberty there, but I'm going to do that. Solving for BC. Do the same thing to the other equation. So I'm going to have B prime, C prime squared equals AC, A prime, C prime squared minus A prime, B prime squared. Solving for B prime squared. And so, sorry, BC, B prime, C prime then is going to equal the square root of A prime, C prime squared minus A prime, B prime squared. And I'm solving for B prime, C prime. Now, back to our givens. A, the length of AB equals the length of A prime B prime. The length of AC equals the length of A prime C prime. So I can make a substitution here. So I'll leave this one as is. So I will say equation, this is equation two. I'll leave equation one as is. So I'll say BC equals the square root of AC squared minus AB squared. I didn't do anything there. But now B prime C prime, I can substitute AC for A prime C prime. So I can write B prime C prime equals the square root of AC squared minus, and I can replace A prime B prime with AB, the length of AB, because we, in the givens we said they're congruent or equal in length. So this is gonna be AB quantity squared, the length of AB quantity squared. So this is a segment AB, not A times B squared. So again, so this is substitution. Substitution property, say prop of equals. So now two things equal the same thing, or equal to each other. So I now can say BC equals, the length of BC equals the length of B prime C prime. And this is again the transitive property of equality. Two things equal to the same thing or equal each other. I just abbreviate property as prop. Okay, so now what do we have? Let's go back up to our diagram. So now I have this. So now I know these two segments are congruent. So there's a bunch of ways I could do this. I could say this is gonna be side angle side, but I could also use side, side, side. So it, take my pick, I'll use a side angle side here. So I can say, I could actually just will say both. It could be either one. So our final step here is, I'll extend this, is going to be Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime B prime C prime, and these are right triangles, by SSS or SAS. Take your pick. Okay, so either way, the bottom line is if you have two triangles that have a congruent hypotenuse and a congruent leg, the triangles are congruent. So that's the hypotenuse leg theorem. Or congruency theorem. Alright, so now we have SSA, side side angle. This is not a triangle congruency property in general. And here is an example why not. Suppose we construct an obtuse triangle ABC. An obtuse triangle has an angle that is between 90 and 180. So some angle, we'll call it X, is between 90 and a 180 degrees. So angle B here is an obtuse angle. So I drew a circle through this vertex A here. So I came around here. So then I, so from B, I, this is a side here. Then I drew an equivalent radius here because this is a radius of the circle here. This is a radius of the circle here. So AB has to equal A prime B. And these two triangles, the one in orange here I've outlined and this bigger triangle ABC, those both share angle C, okay? They also share side BC, okay? And AB is congruent to A prime B, so let's go through this. So triangle ABC and A prime B prime C, so this is A prime, I should say A prime BC. These triangles both share this angle right here. They are, and they are, so therefore, they share a congruent angle there. Angle B, C A and A, 
BCA prime and angle BCA are the same angle. So they share that angle. So that's an angle. They both, triangles both share this side BC. So that's a side. And finally, segment AB is congruent to segment A prime B because they are both radii of this green circle. But obviously, you do have two sides and a non-included angle for both triangles, but clearly these triangles are not congruent. The orange triangle clearly is not congruent to the big triangle ABC. So this is not, in general, a triangle congruency property. You can make it one in certain circumstances, but that is not what we're going to do in this video. So in general, you cannot use SSA as a triangle congruency property. So let's finish by taking some triangles and determining if in fact we can say they're congruent or not. It's possible there's not enough information there. So let's look at number one. Okay, you do have here a side angle side thing, but here you have SSA. So we do not have enough information here to make that determination. Number two, these two triangles share this side, okay? They have a right angle here. They share this side. Let's double mark that, okay? So here's two right triangles. Here is a hypotenuse. So we have a hypotenuse here, hypotenuse here that are congruent. They share a leg. So this is by HL. These triangles are congruent. So triangles are congruent in number two. Number three. These are vertical angles, so these two triangles share these angles here. And they, these two angles are congruent. So these two angles are congruent. However, we do not have an angle, angle, angle congruency posture. Now these triangles will turn out to be similar, the sides will be proportional, but there's not enough info to say that they're congruent. So there's not enough info there. Number four, okay, again, you share a pair of vertical angles there. And so you've got side, angle, side in this one. Side, angle, side. They share a common angle here. Well, it's not a common angle, but we know they're congruent. So this is, triangles are congruent. This was by HL. This one's going to be by side, angle, side. Okay, so let's continue. So let's look at number five. These two triangles share a common side right here. Okay, these angles here are congruent. These angles here are congruent. So there we go, AAS. So these two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. You also could make the argument, if you wanted to, you could say, okay, well, then these angles have to be congruent. So you could also use, so you could use angle, angle, side, but you could also use ASA. So the triangles are congruent. That's, let's use a different color. We can see a little better. AAS or ASA, either one. Triangles are congruent. The last one, they share a common side there. So there it is, SSS, the triangle congruency postulate. So triangles are congruent by SSS. Okay? So now here's some practice. I want you to stop the video and do the first four questions, answer them, stop the video, then we'll go over those. All right, let's take a look. So here we have two triangles. We have a pair of vertical angles here that are congruent. You have a pair of angles here that are congruent. You have a pair of sides. So looking right there, I got A, S, A. So triangles are congruent by A, S, A, angle, side, angle. Number two, you have a pair of congruent angles here because they're marked congruent. They share a common side, but I don't know anything else. So there's not enough info here. Number three, they share a common angle there. They share common side there and they share a common side, this isn't actually common sides, but these two sides are congruent. This is a common side, 
So we have side, angle, side. So these triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Number 14, notice they share this side. These are right triangles. That's a hypotenuse in there. So there's a hypotenuse, there's a leg, there's a leg. So triangles are congruent by H, L. Okay, now do five and six and stop the video, do five and six. Okay, number five, they share a common side there. These sides are congruent, these sides are congruent. So this is S, S, S. So triangles congruent by side, side, side. And the last question, there's a pair of vertical angles they share. They're not share, but are congruent. And there's a pair of angles that are congruent. Okay, and there's a pair of sides that are congruent. So we have angle, angle, A, A, S again. <clears throat> a, A, S. And you could argue, once again, like in a previous question, you could argue, well, they have these angles in here must also be congruent. So you could use A, A, S or A, S, A here. And this concludes the video. So if you found this video informative and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel, The Math Dog. You may share the content of this video with others. Thank you and have a good day.